We're going to talk about reclassification. And in QGIS, that means that we use the raster calculator to kind of uh, use logical, mathematical, and kind of inequality expressions to describe which parts of the raster we want to reclassify. And let's start off with Booleans, because that's easy. Let's say that we're doing um, an analysis in, in which we want to create Booleans so that we can kind of make intersects and things like that. Um, a really simple question might be, okay, well, I want to isolate the pixels that are less than 2. Um, if I just type this into Raster Calculator, I'm going to get something that looks like this. And what you'll notice, of course, is that this is less than 2. So 2 is excluded from this expression, right? Where is the DEM less than 2? It returns a true value for all the 1s and the zeros because those are less than 2. If I uh, wanted to rewrite this expression, I could also say where is the DEM less than or equal to 1, right? So in this case, it's the same output, but I'm writing it a little differently. I'm saying it can be 0, it can be less than 1, or equal to 1, and that includes the 1s as well. If I wrote less than or equal to 2, then I'd come up with a completely different looking thing, and these 2s would all be included. So just start to think about, okay, am I using kind of inclusive um, inequality language or, or exclusive? So what's another thing I could ask? I could say, all right, well, what about greater than 2? And if I wanted to do where the DEM was greater than 2, I'm kind of in the same, the same mindset. All the 3s and 4s are kind of are gathered together because they're all greater than 2, but 2 is not included. Another way to write this one expression might be greater than or equal to 3 in the same sense. Um, it's true that 3 is equal to 3 and 4 is greater than 3. So both of these are included in the greater than or equal to kind of uh, phrasing here. So how do, I, um, how do I create something, let's say, that looks like this, where I get both? And what I'm, what I'm really asking is I, I kind of want that first expression where the DEM is less than 2. Um, but I also want this other expression, and I'm going to actually use the word or to describe it. I want this first one, DEM is less than 2 to be true, or I want the DEM greater than 3 to be true. And I use or because and in logical language means both must be true. But here I'm saying either, either one could be true, right? So if this is if this is true I'm gonna get a 1 or if this is true I'm gonna get a 1 if I said um, that and that then nothing would show it because no pixel can fulfill both of these at the same time so I use or in this case and if I run that command then I would actually I would get this another way to express this would be um, using a plus sign so the idea being that this is kind of summoning this logical expression and this is summoning this logical expression and instead of putting those two um, inequalities into uh, one kind of big logical expression what I'm saying is I want to just take those two inequalities that have returned these ones and zeros and I just want to add those two together so you can actually just you know use the plus sign in this case and just add them one to the other and then you get the, the same kind of result but what if I want to actually reclassify um, this boolean that I've made? And I don't really want it to be binary. I don't want it to be 1 and 0. I want to give it a score. Um, there's a pretty easy way to do that. And that involves kind of doing the same initial statement, right? We say the DEM is greater than 2. And we get this kind of true score here in the, in the faults there. But then all we have to do is multiply that expression um, by whatever number we want. And in this case, if I used 5, then um, I would end up with a kind of a, still a, a raster with only two values, except I have 5 now instead of 1. So the idea there is just that you create the logical expression, it returns the 0 or the 1, but then you can multiply the entire raster by 5, because 5 times 0 will remain 0, and 5 times 1, which is true, will be 5. So it gets a little bit more complicated if you want to do kind of more than one classification at a time. I'm going to show you two ways of doing 
kind of multiple classifications out of one raster. And the first way is, um, I'm going to call it um, isolating classes in um, a raster. And this way is kind of intense. So we're going to just go one step at a time. Here's our DEM again. And remember, this is a continuous raster. It goes from a low value kind of on interval quantitative data up to a high value. It, we could use any raster in this case. It doesn't have to be a continuous raster. It could be a nominal integer raster, discrete values, or things like that. But for now, let's just look at it as if we're going to reclassify this digital elevation model, which is a um, interval continuous um, quantitative raster. And I want to turn it into these classes down here. Let's say that maybe this is again some kind of habitat model or something like that. And I want to have the 4 value turn into 100 because that's the best score on my 0 to 100 scale. Um, everything between that and 0 is going to be um, half as good, 50, except for the 1 values which are only a quarter as good or 25. So in order to get this I've got to kind of figure out how can I isolate these classes from this original raster so that those isolated classes can combine together to make this um, this one, let's just call this the ordinal criteria for our suitability raster. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's just try to get the 25s out of there. Let's try to isolate those. So what I might say is the 25s are greater than 0 and they are less than 2. Right? I've established a range here, and I used AND because both of these statements must be true for me to isolate just the ones. If I was to use the word OR here, the logical statement kind of OR, then the whole raster would be returned because everything is either less than 2 or greater than 0. Um, 4 is greater than 0, and if I use OR, then it fulfills one of the two requirements. But with AND, both requirements must be true. And the only, um, the only value that fulfills both requirements is 1. So you're kind of thinking probably now, why would I go through all this and, and establish this big range to multiply by 25 um, when you know I can get that out of that, but why not just say, OK, TIFF equals 1, right? That would do the same thing. This uh, DEM equals 1 says, yep, everything right there equal to 1. Let's multiply that by 25. So even though these expressions do the same thing, I'm showing you how to establish a range because not every continuous raster is going to be perfect integers like this. And it's important to know how to establish a range because let's say that all of these pixels had slightly different values. Maybe this was 1.01, uh, and this was 1.5, and this was 1.2. Um, with continuous real data or float data, um, equals is not a thing you use very often because everything has a, a unique value, or there's just a, such a wide kind of variety of values that you have to set ranges for those values so they kind of fall into buckets. So I'm going to be using these kind of ranges because I'm trying to show you how to make buckets um, that you can put your values into and reassign them. So with that in mind, let's do another one. So in this next one, let's try to isolate just the 2s and 3s. Um, and maybe they are uh, worth 50, which would be twice as meaningful as 25 and half as meaningful as the 100 class that we're looking for down the end in our kind of ordinal suitability raster. So in order to do that, what I need to do is say, okay, all of the 2s and 3s are both greater than 1, right, and they're less than 4. And that will return a 1 value for all the 2s and 3s, and then I multiply it by 50 and get my, my 50 value in the new raster. So it looks like that worked out. Great. And for the last one, because 4 is my maximum value of my raster, all I have to say for that is where the DEM is greater than 3, make that 100. And so that ought to work too as well. Cool. 
So this is a lot of um, kind of, you know, it looks, looks like I ran the tool three times, and then I could, in a separate um, opening of the tool, I could run all three of these together and just add them. But let's say I want to do it kind of all at once. I don't want to run the tool three times. I don't want to run raster calculator three times. I want to run raster calculator one time and go straight from this original DEM to the um, reclassified ordinal raster. I, I still have to type in the same stuff. So for instance, here's my original 25 definition, and I can put that in here. And I'd have to put in my 50 definition there and put a plus sign between these two phrases. And then the same thing with 100. But instead of running the tool three separate times and then adding them in another, you know, in a fourth run of the tool, I can just run the tool one time and just type in all of this. The problem is you have to keep track of it all in your brain. And if you mess up, then you're not going to get the file that you want. But if I did just type all this in and run it, boom, I'd end up with the raster I'm looking for in the end. This way works really well um, for isolating specific regions like we've seen. Um, and you can use the bucket method where you say and and you do inequalities or you could you know put equal signs in here and alternatively use or to kind of uh, create multiple integer classifications um, but I want to show you one quicker method if you're going to reclassify a continuous raster kind of in a similar way um, where lower values become lower ordinal classes and higher values become higher ordinal classes and I'm going to call this way additive classification. It's it's just a method that I use when I don't want to type out the bins and kind of make these big buckets. I want to just have a faster way of um, combining these to make um, an ordinal raster. So this additive way, we're going to start off um, with a DEM again, or any kind of continuous raster. And I want the same product. I want something that's going to be lower values for lower values, higher values for higher values. And it could be inverted. It could be high for low and low for high. But the point is that it's just a continuum. And that's the only thing that matters is um, you can include um, the other classes. So I'll just go ahead with the example here. For instance, um, if I knew that these values down in the ordinal raster were going to increase, I could include some of those values in my initial statement. Everything that's greater than zero, um, you know, these are all at least 25, the 50s and the 100. So I just give them part of that value um, up here. And then the next class, I say, OK, well, the DEM is greater than 1. Yep, the ones that are greater than 1, I want them to have 50. So I just give them another 25 and now they have 50. Um, and now this pixel also right now only has 50, so for my last classification I give that 50 alone. And I would say, yep, everything greater than 3, which is the 4 alone, and that has 50. So if you looked at each pixel now, you'd say, okay, well, 25 plus 25 plus 50 is 100. Um, all of these, you know, this classification of the ones, those are all 25, and then there's 0 here and 0 here, so they stay at 25. Um, this is kind of just a, a method to make your life a little easier, but it requires that you do a little bit more thinking. Um, if this is confusing, the isolation method works just as well. Just wanted to give you some practice because we will be doing um, we will be doing more types of raster addition in the future. And it's helpful to just see kind of um, the different ways that you can classify things. Okay, good luck.